Hello everyone, today we'll be sketching on our iPad Pro with our iPencil, talking a little bit about the Sketches Pro app and actually making this image and how I go through my process. Check it out today, let's do it. Uh, so here we are in the Taiya Sui Sketches Pro 2 app, and I just kind of want to give you a little orientation of uh, how things work before we actually start doing a um, kind of a tracing, art tracing of a, uh, a picture that I want to do. And if we start with this up here, this is just the pencil tool. So as you can see here, depending on how I hold my um, Apple Pencil here, it, it kind of changes how it goes. If I do two fingers to the left, it's going to undo. If I go to this one right here, it's just a bigger pencil uh, chalk here. So if you can see that we can have different tips and you're going to see this through most of all the, uh, the tools over here on the left. This one right here will indicate that it will start um, kind of skinnier and end fatter to give you kind of that uh, uh, stroke effect there. And then most of them also have these sliders over here to the left and right. Um, this is going to control your opacity. This is going to control your size. What's useful about uh, all these tools is you can kind of say, well, this is my finer point one, this is my larger one, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and uh, you'll find kind of ones that work for you and ones that don't work for you. Let's go ahead and undo these. So you can kind of undo quite uh, um, deep in the stack here. If we go to the right, we can redo options, things like that. This next one here is a fine point uh, marker here, and if we go to this one, this one is kind of like a almost like a magic marker type effect here and again I won't kind of show you all the different uh, things because they're all the similar here right here is a uh, one that I use quite a bit this is a, I'm going to use this for the line drawing aspect here in a little bit uh, this one right here is a paintbrush and uh, well actually no this one is um, this one right here, whatever that is, I'm not sure. I don't actually use that one very much. Um, this one is the paintbrush right here. <clears throat> this one gives a really kind of a nice effect here. And if we were to change colors and to change colors, you can just select over here. If you long hold it over here, you can pick a different one. If you uh, single tap over here, you can get a palette uh, going on there. I haven't really used the options in the top right too much, but for now, uh, let's say we go with this one here. There's your purple. And if you want it to be um, a little bit translucent, you can, can come back here to this opacity. And as you can see, uh, it makes it really cool and simple easy to use and if we go to the next one here this is the watercolor i use this one a lot for shading and as you see here we've got the different options um, you can blend this while it's wet or while um, it will dry um, i haven't really totally figured out the whole wet and dry thing but it is a it is something you can do uh, this one right here is the airbrush and this one let me give a little more opacity back to this here this is going to have, um, you know, that sprayed look and really good for like a glittery or a sparkle effect. Um, that's the only things I've really used it for at this point. Uh, we've got the ink pen here. As you can see, it uh, does that. If we go back to a, a black here, it just kind of squirts out there. It's kind of cool. Um, you can have a uh, different one there. And this is like a, a chisel or at least uh, more of like a calligraphy style there if you were so inclined to do so. And finally we come to patterns and stencils. So <clears throat> what you can do uh, is you can pick one of these patterns, draw a design, and it automatically fills it. So um, I haven't really used the patterns too much, though uh, it does look useful. Now I've used uh, the fonts often, and we, we'll do something with those in a uh, towards the end here and then you also have shapes um, we've got squares um, you can kind of orient them change the color of them and then place them on your layer and uh, you can, you've got a few options here what what you don't have which is either I uh, haven't figured it out or it just uh, doesn't exist it's not possible rectangles and ellipses um, aren't possible so you, you can kind of combine two squares like on your own to make a rectangle but the ellipse is much harder so you kind of got to draw one on your own so let's undo that and then uh, actually let's redo that and now let's bring back <clears throat> let's use the eraser 
and there you go you can erase it out of there and your eraser can also have opacity which is nice so you can only take out some of it and that's pretty cool there um in case you haven't noticed here this little uh, icon here in the the bottom corner right here it looks like a an l and it changes this shows and hide your tools you're going to want to use that quite a bit because when you when you're doing uh drawing later if you don't pull away the tools um very likely you can accidentally change your color um so uh, definitely something you want to use and let's see here we've got the smudge tool haven't really used that too much and that's basically if you want to blend a couple things on the screen and we've got the uh, the knife tool which is useful because you can do stuff like that and you can use two fingers to clone it now what i've also noticed with this knife tool uh, the current version it's a little buggy and uh, it may cause your system to crash and so what i do often is uh, pinch out like this and then go back in because it forces a save i have lost some changes um, due to um, some crashing and not too much i mean i still love this app. just so you know i love this app and then uh, we've got uh, the ruler here what the ruler does for me is it allows me to draw perpendicular lines very etch a sketchy here. Um, ooh, there I got a 45 degree angle in there. Anyway, so it, it really makes things blocky. Uh, so that is useful. Uh, so, all right. Next thing we got here when we want to look at is in this top right corner here. This is your layers. Uh, you start with a layer at the bottom. If we look at that one, um, you will be able to change your. Oops, I don't pick the right thing here. You'll be able to change your grain of the paper. So if you want no grain, fine grain, watercolor. Um, change the color of the paper, you can do so. I usually keep it white, um, but you can do that. Um, if you want to add a new layer, um, you do so just by doing that. The little blue rectangle here on the side indicates that this layer is active. If you want to hide a layer, use the little eye icon over here. Um, you also have different blending modes, very Photoshop-like, um, where the top is the most, uh, or the, the layer on the top of the stack here is on top, and so on and so forth. So if we add a second layer here, um, and draw on top of it and we decide oh you know what uh, let's erase something because we have that layer selected actually let me get some opacity back to my eraser um, we're not erasing the red if we were to combine these two layers which you can do um, it would erase the red underneath and we'll do that in a second so we can also take away that layer there are some layer options here uh, your, your blend modes you can bring down the opacity of a layer which we will also use delete it transform it uh, duplicate and flip it around so if we want to merge two layers you long hold a layer and drop it onto another and there you go so now when we do the erase option here on this it's erasing both layers well it's one layer now okay so we're going to go ahead and delete a layer and start fresh here and we'll I'll add one back here so today's drawing task is going to be uh, basically trace over an image but make it kind of artistic so what you can do here is you can import a photo and i've already downloaded one that we're going to use here uh, before you kind of put it down uh, you can orient it however you want and hit this check mark and if you look here on the layers, it's on this layer, so we can take it away, bring it back. And what I like to do when I do these tracings is I take it to about 50%. And then I uh, create a new layer. I use the pencil. And then I begin to trace it out. Okay, it's usually at this point where I start to uh, take away the, the image from underneath and just kind of look and see how well my tracing did. See if I missed anything major or obvious. And it really doesn't look like much at this point except the, a drawing that I traced. Um, but it's actually a little harder than you think to just trace an image. Um, and then... Uh, because what we're going to do from here is kind of stop using the photograph for any sort of further, you know, 
artwork or illustration. We just kind of want to um, go from here and ink it out. And this is where the image is really starting to look like, you know, a piece of artwork. And before we get into the inking, let me just do some final touch-ups here on the pencil drawing. Okay, so we're going to take that away and I'm going to add a new layer. And so essentially this pencil drawing right here will never be in the final product. So the photo won't be in the final and neither will this pencil drawing. So what I usually do next is get one of these finer point felt tip markers and kind of do a little sample there and go, okay, that's pretty good. Um, I don't know if you noticed during the pencil drawing that I had to undo or redo some lines here and there. And it's mostly because um, the... The palm rejection sometimes didn't work, meaning it, it thought it was my fingers when really it was my palm. And I just realized his nose kind of looks a little weird here. Let me see what I forgot here. Looks like some part of the nasio flange there. Let's uh, zoom in here. So a lot of this, oops, we definitely don't want it red. A lot of these uh, features will start coming to life um, in the shading uh, aspect of things. So let's see, it's do something like that and I don't know if I like his nose quite yet let's see here let me bring back some sort of opacity here and let me take away the pencil drawing oh, it's just kind of a weird nose oh well we'll go with it for now we'll adjust later as needed okay so back to the next part which is going to be that uh, ink drawing here and for this one I like to do long steady strokes or well or even short ones because it gives the effect especially since it starts kind of um, skinny and ends fat so it also depends what direction you want to go with things here and I'm going to position my hand here so I can do this really long one here and then I will Reposition. If you haven't figured out yet to change the zoom, you do, you're going to be doing pinching with two fingers. It's pretty intuitive how it works. And at the end of this, we'll try to figure out some sort of cool, fun, witty saying on uh, what this is. Basically, what I like to do is kind of make humor, artwork, meme type things. Um, one thing on these eyes, so they're going to look like zombie eyes unless we put a highlight spot in them so let's sort of do that um and what a highlight is is basically it's a white circle and so far that's just too bold there so it's looks like it's down there and really it should be also down this corner but there isn't much of one here there is the pupil, which is right there, I believe, and right there. Usually I make that the black spot. We'll come back and make, um, I think this is your iris. Not very good at anatomy. And maybe that's too many. I'm going to undo those. There we go. The eyes hopefully will look less zombie-like. There's that palm rejection thing going on there. Okay, now let's get back to our other uh, felt tip pen here. Uh, I'm not even sure what to call that tool. And let's ditch the photo underneath because we don't need that anymore. You can, you know, obviously you don't need to do Star Wars stuff. If you want to do, I'm going to make this a little skinnier. If you want to do, you know, your family and things like that, by all means, it's super fun to do so. There we go, it's a little finer point here. Can I make this eye as naturally almond shaped as I can? Some exaggerated wrinkle lines. And notice I'm adding less pressure on, uh, on this and it's really cool that the Apple Pencil um, notices you know how hard you're you're pushing or the iPad notices how hard you're pushing the Apple Pencil that is and it changes accordingly. So. All right, so uh, let me get 
going in earnest on this. Okay, so there we go. We have begun to put um, our line drawing there. So what I usually do at this point is actually take away the pencil drawing. So what we're left right now is with this as our drawing so far. And as you can see, even tracing over this, it still becomes very organic very quickly because um, it's very impossible to just turn a photograph into a um, perfect line drawing without it starting to look artistic-y. So if we bring back uh, the uh, original photo here and just kind of look and just give you an idea of how it's coming along so far. So, so far so good. Usually at this point uh, I do what's called the paint layer. And the paint layer is just going to be a base coat of everything. So if we look at everything in a scene right here, um, we've got some darkish brownish, even though I know from the movie that's kind of a blue. Um, it's really a, a brown blue. C-3PO there is going to be golden color. We've got Han's skin tone here. We've got some sort of furriness here, which really has a, a kind of a two-tone effect there. So I'm not sure how we're going to do that. And then you get this kind of like scarf looking thing here and then the background uh, is kind of a gradient gray and we won't deal with the background just yet so at this point we are just going to paint a new layer and I usually create a layer and I move it to underneath the line drawing here and I, I usually like to use um, this tool here and um, before we get started here let's uh, let's kind of We'll start with Han's flesh tone color, and rather than actually pick it off the photograph, I'm going to pick a, a color that I like. Give it more of my mark here on stuff here. Let's, let's see, where's a fleshy color that's way too red? That's uh, kind of... Um, really, I need kind of a, a pinkish, don't I? Oh, there we go. So more in this range here, okay. And as you can see in the bottom there, it is now selected uh, as our color. And before we get going, just make sure you're on the right layer. Sometimes I'll start drawing on the wrong layer and that is not fun because it takes away our ability to um, undo or modify something by itself. So now that we have here, we're just going to start coloring uh, this particular color once we are happy with this color um, you know all over the place where it needs to go we'll switch to the next color and the next color I can go ahead and kind of go over the eyes here we'll come back and uh, use some paint dabs or the eraser and whatnot and so all right let's color <laughs> So right here I noticed that I'm missing a, uh, a boundary, uh, so I'm going to add it back in here, and it is right here, i got to make sure I put it on the right layer, again, I've definitely forgotten to do that, oops, and I don't want a blue, I've definitely forgotten to do that before, and there we go, and I'm going to continue on, Ooh, you know what, let me put one here too, so we give the idea that the coat has a lining, and as you noticed, I picked a fake false color there. We're really seeing kind of a dark brown uh, color there, but from the movie, I wanted to kind of be a little more movie-like. And so we're going to continue with that fake blue. There's another missing line there. And uh, let's keep trekking on here. <laughs> Now is probably a good uh, stopping point to make some points. Uh, so I'm just touching up where I got kind of sloppy with the coarse uh, brush. 
or marker tip, whatever you want to call it, the tool. And I use it with the fine point. So a lot of these uh, angular areas here, I, I've got to kind of slow down and fix up some things. Fix up some things if I can talk properly. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to take an eraser on the paint layer and kind of go around the perimeter here and see, see also where I goofed up here. And let's trim off some extra color bleed there. Probably should go with a little smaller eraser. All right, let's do it. Okay, at this point you might be thinking, hey, looking pretty good, but it's extremely flat and I would have to totally agree with you. So after we get the kind of the basic paint layer on there, the next uh, task for me is typically uh, to start adding shading. And the light uh, appears to be coming from the right hand side if we were to look at the photo. So let's, let me just kind of hide everything and look here. So the lighting seems to be coming from the right hand side. C-3PO's eyes are uh, pretty bright there. And so this is where some of the magic happens. And um, what I usually do here is create a layer uh, in between the line drawing and the paint layer. And if we actually take away um, the uh, everything but the paint, you can see uh, that's what the paint layer end up looking like. And let me bring everything back except for the photo. And we're going to use this time a watercolor. And this is where um, a lot of your artistic uh, sense is going to need to to come out here. So I usually pick full black on here with the watercolor, but I make it transparent. Uh, so let's go with a 50% transparency and just let's test it. Okay. Now, because it's transparent, the more times I cross over the same s spot there, because it's wet ink, it will just get darker and darker and darker. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. And again, the light is coming from the right in this particular case. So um, we're going to have shadows and whatnot, um, kind of in the usual spots. And the nose, it's always going to be the nose, how to do the nose. Um, so um, I will start getting the shadows in place. Okay, as you can see, I've got the basic shadows on there right now, and I made a big mistake here, if you didn't notice. I accidentally had the wrong layer selected. I had the paint layer selected when I was doing my shadows. I meant to put them right here on this layer right there. So, uh, I would say normally, do that. Uh, don't do what I just did, even though um, it turned out, because now what I can't do is I can't change the shading without recoloring it underneath it all right so let's try to get the highlights in here and basically i'm going to pick pure white and we're going to go back to that same watercolor brush this time we're going to make sure we're on our own layer again the lighting is coming from the right and well, let's do this <laughs> All right, so highlighting this one's proven a little tricky, but I think you get the idea. So one of the last things I like to do is kind of add something witty, um, some sort of geek nerd humor stuff to it. And for that, we're going to use the font feature here. They got a really cool kind of handwritten one here. Uh, let's see here. And let's think of something. Me, when someone... asks me a question that's just part of it just like so now and it's got a little check mark here hopefully I didn't make a typo there and that, if you notice I put this on its own layer oops wrong font try again sometimes this is a little tricky uh, when someone asks me a question while reading 
the error log. Let's see here. And you can resize it and position it however you want. Me, when someone asks me a question while reading the error log, let's see here. If I made a typo, I'll know here in just a second. Um, I like to use this tool here, which was our original ink tool. And I like to draw a box around it. Um, just got to give myself enough room top and bottom. And all the way across, all the way across. Oops, totally. Yeah. I don't know what I would do without the undo gesture here. Dang it. Um, all right. And so I'm going to, rather than kind of mess with Han too much there, you know, I don't want to delete him and only change my mind here in a minute, maybe. Um, what I do is I put all this on its own layer. That way, if I decide to do something different, I haven't just erased a bunch of work I did here. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of fake cover him up here by drawing some white on a layer just above him. And again, this is where you're like, oh gosh, hopefully I didn't uh, draw on the wrong layer. So sometimes paranoia sets in and I actually go in here and uh, double check often that I didn't do that. And sometimes I will use one of these boxes to cover up either a particularly complicated area that I just don't want to deal with or, um, dang it, or, uh, or whatnot. So or if I don't want to draw. So sometimes I'll draw this box here early on, position everything, that way I know um, whether or not I want to um, do an area or not. So I don't like the, the size of the font of the second one, so I'm going to use this knife tool. Hopefully it doesn't crash on me, because sometimes that's what it does. And the reason I can just kind of be loosey-goosey through that line is because it's on its own layer. And this is where I'm starting to get frustrated because, yeah, um, I don't know what happened, but let's highlight it again. And there we go. And you know what? Let's go with, I don't know, is that much different even? Okay. All right, so far so good. Um, another thing I like to do then is put a background on here and... This creates its own kind of trouble on its own, so I usually put that underneath the paint layer. And I like to use this paintbrush right here for that. And I'm going to go with just like a cool gray. And you'll notice right away when I do this that it looks good in some areas and not in other areas because we never really actually painted uh, white on that over there. So this means we've got some more painting to do. Okay, um, as you notice there, I had to create an extra layer there, but so far so good, and I kind of did a sloppy paint job on his I don't know, scarf or whatever on purpose, kind of give it an extra bit of uh, gradient there. Another thing I like to do is, well, if I had a shadow layer, I would go back to my shadow layer and take care of the uh, shadow underneath this little sign here that I created. So I like to do this. It just makes things pop out a little nicer. Kind of makes it look like it's above the actual environment and image. And as you can see there, I've got a little bit of paint here to deal with. Oops. I'm going to try that again. Let me get some more opacity. Oh, that size. Opacity. Thank you. Oops. Take care of that line there maybe right there too and uh, let's see me when someone asked me a question while reading the error log and then one last thing i like to do is uh sign it and i try to find a conspicuous or inconspicuous spot here to do so and i'm going to do it right here 
just like so. And that is an example of my technique on how I do things. Now, obviously, some of the shading and the highlighting, you know, works, doesn't work in areas. It's totally, you know, you got it's a learned thing. So you'll have to practice over and over and over again. I still struggle with it. Um, but the uh, basic process is uh, pretty clear here. So basically, we started with an image. Here, let me go ahead and turn off all the layers here and get back down to where we started. Oops, I accidentally hit help. One thing, see all the layers I'm using? One thing, I only have uh, four gig of RAM on this and I've actually ran out of memory at one point or a couple points by using too many layers. So um, we started here. We, uh, I think we then sketched it out so we can get rid of that. Um, eventually we then inked it out. We then painted it and uh, the shadows we put on there and we accidentally put the shadows on the same layer as the paint. Normally I would not do that. We added some highlights. We uh, painted in some areas that uh, needed to be painted in for signage purposes. Added a shadow, added some words, put a box around that. We signed it and that is basically, oops, we miss, missed the background here. And that is uh, my basic technique, if you want to take a photo and kind of turn it into a, an artwork meme, um, I use a similar technique when I'm doing stick figures and whatnot. But anyway, thanks for watching.